Well, 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 if it isn't little Timmy again. You know what happens when every black hole collides, but now you want to learn what happens when every galaxy in the universe merges. Silly little boy. Fine. Kyle and I here will give you exactly what you want. Will we get some weird super galaxy? Will all the stars and planets get destroyed? Or could the universe even end? Knock him out again, Kyle. It's time to teach these delusional viewers a lesson. Unlike our sponsor Squarespace and their all-in-one web platform, which isn't delusional. More on that later though, because yes, fortunately for your learning, there are actual realistic space situations that will result in a massive collision of galaxies right here in the Milky Way. Everyone knows Andromeda is the nearest real galaxy, but what many fail to realize is that the Milky Way is literally eating dwarf galaxies right at this moment. Well, there remains. It already did the motoring. But it even gets more insane than that. See, the Milky Way is in what's called the local group of galaxies. And there are 134 of them. Yes, 132 galaxies all around us and Andromeda with many smaller sized galaxies and even smaller dwarf galaxies just existing. All with supermassive black holes at the center. All just waiting to be merged and collided. Uh, what's that? Yes, Kyle, this will actually happen. Unlike that time I won a supply of free double cheeseburgers with real Angus beef, only to be denied after I already ate 50 on the first day. Surely that can't be legal, right? Besides, I was just going through a rough time. Anyway, the first stage in merging all galaxies in the entire universe is starting right here, and it's already begun. Andromeda is moving toward the Milky Way at roughly 110 kilometers per second, and the two galaxies will begin their interaction in about four to five billion years. The merger will not occur in a single event though. Instead, the galaxies will pass through each other multiple times over several hundred million years. Yes, both are currently beautiful spiral galaxies, ancient, large, powerful, like me, and each pass distorts their spirals, redistributes their stars, you know, into nothingness, like bye-bye, you can't be here anymore, nothingness. Look at them go! And these two galaxies will keep doing this until they combine into one system. The likely end result is a large elliptical or lenticular galaxy with a diameter of several hundred thousand light years. For context, that's a lot larger than they are now. And it'll have a new name, Milkdromeda. Now, we've spoken about this before, but here is where we take it to the next stage of absolute craziness. <laughs> Similar to a Congolese hyena realizing someone stole the corpse that he'd saved for dinner. It was me. What's that, Kyle? No, 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 I just needed it for this physics project where we had to collide skeletons. Nothing else, nothing else. And speaking of collisions of things that used to be alive, yes, the sun and all the stars might also collide. Nah, just kidding, guys. You'll all be long dead. And in fact, during this galactic collision, the stars of both galaxies will largely avoid direct collisions because of the vast distances between them. The probability of stars colliding is so small, it's basically zero. The gas cloud around all these galaxies, however, will interact. Their collisions compress all the hydrogen gas involved, which will trigger massive boosts in star formation, fueling an accretion disk onto the central black holes. Yes, they haven't yet merged, by the way. As these galactic centers sink towards each other, the Milky Way's Sagittarius A and Andromeda's central black hole, which I guess has no name, unlucky, eventually merge, releasing perhaps 10 to the 54 joules of energy. Basically, what that means for you, and this is true, that's the energy released by all stars in the observable universe in a few hours. This insane merger will create a single, more massive, supermassive black hole at the core of the final galaxy. Anyone want to name it, by the way? No? What about Sagittarialmida? Is that good for everybody? It sounds a bit like an exotic type of pasta, but you know me, I dig the slurp. And for the stars that manage to not be thrown away during the merger, they will remain in the super galaxy as it can finally rest as the new king of the local group, which Kyle and Timmy are now going to merge into one galaxy. All 132 remaining. Stage two begins. Let's go forward in time to witness this. Activate faster than light. Wait, where's Mongolian horse? Did we, did we forget about him? Damn it, Kyle. Guess I'll have to sit on your back for this one. We're here. Okay, remember, this region contains more than a hundred galaxies all gravitationally bound together. 
because the local group is already a closed group, nothing inside it can escape. Every smaller galaxy gradually loses orbit energy through interactions with the larger galaxies of Andromeda and the Milky Way. Well, now that's one galaxy. One big f galaxy. And over tens of billions of years, each one of these 132 galaxy objects will be absorbed into said big f galaxy. Don't forget, these mergers are only possible because Andromeda and the Milky Way currently have massive dark matter halos that allow them to even exist. It is the glue. All galaxies have it, and now with Milkdromeda, goodness, that halo will consume all, eventually. Yes, 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 to me, the process is slow but inevitable, much like you learning anything. But that's perhaps because you're not a subscriber. Subscribers learn way faster and have great cheekbones. Yeah. So what even is the mechanic that allows this all to happen? And how do scientists predict that the local group will indeed merge in the far future? Well. It's called dynamical friction. This basically means gravity drags smaller galaxies inward, stretching their stars into streams and stripping away their dark matter halos. Their really small dark matter halos. We can see that even today with the Milky Way and the streams we have around us from that same interaction. For all 132 remaining galaxies, the cores and central black holes will fall towards the main galactic center and merge with Sagittariomeda. By the end of this phase, maybe like 100 billion years or so, the local group will no longer mm. resemble a collection of galaxies at all. It will become a single, extremely massive galaxy-like system occupying the same space by containing the combined stars and black holes of all its former members, merged into one. Super Milkdromeda, perhaps. Much like if you merged all of your website design into my favorite place, Squarespace. They make it so easy with their cutting edge design tools to do so. It offers a complete library of professionally designed and award-winning templates. Once you know what you want to make a website on, it will allow you to bring it to life. Whatever you need, they have it. Whether you need to track SEO so you can actually, you know, know what's going on on your website, or send email campaigns of your outrageous arms, or need to raise funds for outrageous trips around the Milky Way, or, you know, community campaigns, Squarespace allows you to tell your story. So when you're ready to start, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gravitypool to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Anyway, back to Super Milkdromeda. There is debate over the shape it will be, but all I see, regardless, is a glorious star city, Kyle. Ah, so much star formation, such a massive black hole hundreds of millions of times that of the sun. Maybe a billion. It's making me so excited that it made me wee a little in my pants. Ignore that though, because now that the entire local group has collapsed into one dominant galaxy, the third step is to understand the larger galactic structures surrounding it. The local group is not isolated in empty space, it sits near the outskirts of the Virgo Cluster, the nearest major galactic cluster. Virgo contains hundreds to thousands of galaxies, all held together by a massive dark matter halo and immersed in extremely hot gas between all the galaxies. This gas reaches temperatures of tens of millions of degrees and emits X-rays continuously, revealing the gravitational depth of the cluster. To put it simply, it's deep deeper than the wallet of my new sugar mommy. Yes, she even paid for this new rocket the other day. Now I can enter those high stakes poker games with Ripped Goose. God, those are such fun nights. Until I come home without any winnings and get punished because, you know, he sold me out. But anyway, the local group, Vogo, and 100,000 other galaxies are actually all part of the Lanier Kea supercluster connected together by a massive gravitational basin, an anomaly. So, can we merge all of these galaxies too? Sadly, with the current expansion of the universe, Lanier Kea as a whole is not gravitationally bound together and so will not merge. The rest of the supercluster will drift apart over billions and trillions of years. So, what has to happen for us to merge all the galaxies in the universe together? Well, the conditions of the universe must change. Specifically, the influence of dark energy must get reduced or removed as that is what creates the expansion of space. Only then do regions like Linea Kea become capable of contracting and merging instead of spreading out. So, assuming that outcome actually comes true in the future, maybe, what will happen next? Well, let's jump forward about 100 billion years or so, and the first thing that happens is that the Virgo cluster from before would no longer be slipping away from us. Instead, it would start to slow down, 
stop expanding and eventually reverse towards Supermodromeda. Because at this point, we can assume that all those hundreds of thousands of galaxies from Virgo are now all in the same enormous dark matter halo and also have become a Super Virgo galaxy. But it would be way larger than Super Mogdromeda because 1000 plus galaxies would have merged together. So, you know, trillions of stars, a billions of solar mass black hole in the center, probably loads of tiny black holes are still around before they collide too. And wait, do you see that, Kyle? What's that emerging from the tiny black hole over there? It can't be. It's Mongolian horse. He's here. He made it. Yes. Quick, get on the ship. Why did you make it all this way? And how? Oh. No, oh. he says I left the oven on before Earth died and my house burnt down. <laughs> Classic. Well then, talking about burning shit down, watch this guys, step four. Super Mogdromeda is going to gradually begin falling towards the Super Virgo galaxy over billions of billions of years. Just like the local group before, but with even more obscene energy levels. This is the part where merging stops being some pretty spirals and turns into just a full-scale gravitational messy battle. Because when clusters collide like Virgo, the gas inside them does actually collide, and that impact creates shockwaves millions of light years across, hotter than anything in either galaxy, just burning anything that isn't also a star. We're talking about gas heated to tens of millions of degrees, x-rays stretching between entire galaxies. Galaxy clusters merging isn't just two galaxies bumping shoulders like the Milky Way and Andromeda. This is thousands of galaxies, entire clouds of plasma, and unbelievable gravitational objects slamming into each other on scales hitherto unseen. And now with all those galaxies merged into just a super Virgo galaxy, we can still feel those same shock waves. You can feel it on the ship. I love this part. Woo! Feel the violent turbulence as intergalactic gas is crushed, mixed, and accelerated. Yes, yes, look at it to me. Super Mogdromeda falling straight into the core of the Virgo Cluster Super Galaxy. Shock waves, sound in space. Yes. And yes, we even have examples of these shock waves from the Perseus Cluster today. Now imagine this times 100 billion. It's so big it'd make the sun look like a marble while the other galaxies are the size of a city. And finally, finally, after another 50 billion years, Super Mogdromeda and the Virgo Super Galaxy will have merged and we will have peace. All that's left is a shapeless circular mass of trillions of stars with a supermassive black hole up to 300 billion solar masses and perhaps 12,000 AU in size. And with that much star formation, it had probably become an active galactic nucleus or AGN. That just means a black hole is eating and eating good. Jets, energy, radiation. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds like that vacation me and that new sugar mommy took to Turk and Kaikos. But we're not even done with just two clusters of galaxies merging. Step five, we're going to be moving faster, but also slower now. With dark energy gone, the entire linear chaos supercluster begins to collapse. All the groups, all the clusters, all the structures that were once drifting apart now begin to contract together. It takes hundreds of billions of years, but the direction is clear. Everything starts heading towards everything else. These huge clusters, Virgo, Hydra, Centaurus, Fornax, Norma, they don't stay separate. They merge. One mega cluster forms, then absorbs another, then another, until what used to be hundreds of thousands of galaxies becomes a single gravitational giant dominating the entire region of space. What's that Mongolian horse? Nah, true. Mm -hmm, very true. See, Timmy, you're thinking, damn, so many stars would be here now. But aren't all the stars dead at this point with only red dwarves and white dwarves remaining? Why? Yes, Timmy. Yes, indeed. But as Mongolian horse has so rightly pointed out, because of these mergers and the amount of gas being collided, a new wave of star formation would have taken place. All kinds of stars. Sun-like, orange-type, blue giants, O-types, and even hot blue sub-dwarfs. Once Linear K emerges into one singular behemoth galaxy, the next step is collapsing the structures beyond it. Remember, if we look at the universe far out enough, we see those filaments like the large quasar group and the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. But what are they? Well, they're just literally groups of galaxies, quasars, clusters, and superclusters. That's what the universe looks like far enough away. So each and every one of those, perhaps trillions of galaxies, have to merge. Theoretically, there is a limit to the size of a galaxy in a black hole, but if we are wrong and they can break that theoretical limit, indeed, it's time for the final step for the Linnea Kea galaxy 
to merge with every other super cluster galaxy. The mergers would happen in very much the same way, and this could take another trillion years, but after all mergers, the remaining stars in the universe would be part of this one galaxy. They are the parts that actually shine. And once more, you'd see a massive amount of star formation again. But the raw size of this truly super galaxy? Roughly up to 1 billion light years across. That's the main galaxy. But the massive dark matter halo and all the stars that were slingshotted out and didn't make it? That range could be up to 10 billion light years across. It's the deepest gravitational well in the universe that will ever be produced. Mostly because everything in the entire universe is here and the only stuff not here are black holes and dead stars that were thrown away in the mergers. The galaxy is basically featureless. No spiral arms, no disk, just a smooth round elliptical mess of old stars with pockets of new star formation whenever gas gets compressed. The inner region grows faintly. The outer halo is almost invisible and the central black hole of about 1 trillion solar masses dominates the gravity of everything. But what would happen next? This absolute behemoth of a galaxy exists, stars eventually will all die, red dwarfs will be the only ones left, as the one galaxy in the universe actually will only look a little bit red. Maybe. But in 10 to the 50, 10 to the 100 years, what would be the last ever thing to happen in the universe? Let's show Timmy before he wakes up. Oh.